Okay, this video is going to go over the protection tab in the fault manager. So from the main screen, we're going to either click Alt plus P or click on this tab right here. And that's going to jump us to the fault manager gender protection main screen. And in this main screen, we've got several options and displays. Um, malfunction indicator light pin or check engine light pin is going to be set up here. Uh, the polarity for that. Normally it's going to be normal, but if your functionality is such that it's on when you want it off and off when you want it on, then you would invert that pin, just like the other options in the software. We've got primary rev limit set point. This is also in the limiters tab. TPS above exhaust back pressure fault percent. So above 80% throttle and a pressure ratio of 0.75 or higher, it's going to trigger this. I'm sorry, 0.75 or lower. Since its ratio is going down, is worse. And then uh, exhaust back pressure one and two variance limit 20%. So if you've got a twin turbo car uh, and back pressure sensors in each bank, and one of them is getting 20% higher than the other, this can trigger a fault. Um, again, we have these where you can click on the right corner and see the help for the individual one. So in this case, if this thing had a boost leak on one turbo or a back pressure leak, something along those lines, a bad compressor. Uh, your back pressure is going to go up this can trigger a fault to let you know there's a problem in the system even though you're making the boost that you want one of the turbos is working harder than the other for some reason so this one's handy for that kind of thing um, these action reasons right here for cut throttle defa default to base boost and delayed engine shutdown this will tell you what in the fault manager is, is caught or what in the system is causing this to be triggered in the fault manager so if it was an O2 lean condition for example it would say lean condition here so these are while they're active or suspected or whatever you have the fault manager set up to tell you, which we're going to cover in a minute. You also have oil level switch inputs, uh, the polarity, and ADC switch counts for some firmwares have those uh, in there as well. Uh, your lean cut is based on if it's lean above this mixture and this boost pressure for that amount of time, it's going to trigger a fault. And again, in the fault, it doesn't mean that just because it's triggered, something's going to happen. You have to set that up in the fault manager first. So EGT high fault limit, over boost time allowed before cut, two seconds over this above your target will trigger a fault. Engine shutdown delay. Uh, if that's triggered, this is your calibrator time to actually shut the engine off. You want to be careful using the engine shutdown functions. There's a hard shutdown, and there's also a delayed shutdown. If it's a road going car, you're going to want to use the delay so you can trigger the check engine light first, let the driver know there's going to there's a problem, and then kill the engine. You don't want the guy flying around through a corner on a road course and just shut the engine off with no warning. That might cause more problems than the engine failure would have caused. So uh, use this carefully. Um, if you're on an engine dyno, you might use the immediate shutdown. Um, but on a road going car, you really want to use that delay instead of the, the hard shutdown. Okay, our active faults is just going to continue to scroll through anything that's active. Since I'm on my bench here, most of these sensors aren't plugged in, so they're just going to sit here and tell you that all these sensors aren't plugged in. Um, hard relevant reason, again, all these will tell you why they occurred. Then we've got our oil pressure gauge over here. The yellow line will be basically the values you have in this table. The red is actual pressure, and you want to set this up when the engine is under normal operating temperature and uh, you run it through its RPM range and then I usually pull 15 or 20 percent out of that uh, depending on how you know close I want to monitor things with this particular engine but as your temperatures go up obviously your pressure is going to go down a little bit because the oil is going to get thinner so you want to be careful with that as well but that's where you set all this stuff up now we're going to go into the fault manager and I'm going to show you how all this stuff works. So you'll notice right away we've got a list that's being generated. We have uh, all our sensors on the side as well as different fault uh, channels that we're going to look at. We've got a, a mode for enabled, disabled, um, save occurred. We'll, we'll open those up here in a second. I just want to briefly explain this stuff here. So we've got a code. This is going to flash the check engine light, your MIL. Uh, this number of times and if you go into the MIL screen you'll see that uh, you can configure how you want your codes to flash so this one's gonna flash for example uh, two blinks space three blinks space four blinks and then a, a pause and it's gonna start over and go through that again so um, if we go in here to our ML screen you'll see how this is set up so if I want to clear those 
I have to put the pedal to the floor five times within 10 seconds to clear them. Three times within 10 seconds flashes the codes. And then you can also calibrate the time between flashes here and then your time between codes. So this is all calibratable. So uh, this is a pretty handy function for your end users as well as shops to help diagnose problems over the phone. Um, these are customizable. The ones that are in there by default are standard SAE codes for like overboost limits at P234. P so some of those can be instantly recognizable. However, you can change these to whatever you want. If you want to create your own set of codes, you can do that. Uh, fault samples and total samples, so 25 times out of 50, these samples are measured every 4 milliseconds. So if you want something to happen very fast, like boost limit exceeded, for example, 1 out of 2, we're going to go ahead and create the trigger. That's considered a fault. 25 out of 50 is considered a fault. So these determine when it's actually triggered. If you get counts of fault underneath these values, it's considered uh, suspected. It hasn't occurred. Once it goes above this value, then it's considered occurred. And if it's above this value currently, then it's considered active. So, for example, if we've got an APP sensors conflict, that's bad. We, the computer doesn't know what we're requesting for throttle, so we're going to go ahead and cut the throttle while that's active. Then you may want to also turn on a check engine light so that the person driving the car knows that there's something wrong. It's just the car's just not responding for no reason. Okay. Then you can add your code here and say you want to give it a one, two, three, four. Okay, so now it'll blink one, two, three, four and through that process. So you can add four actions with uh, different act, you know, actions that you, I'm sorry, four actions with different occurrences. So our list of actions is quite long. You, you know, cut throttle, default to base boost, delayed engine shutdown, disable auto crank, uh, that's for the starter control. Disable the injectors. You can have it just shut the injectors off. Um, we use that for injector test procedures as well as you know, any safeguard that you can think of where you'd want to shut the injectors off. Um, you can disable the NOx system if the NOx sensors are detected as bad. And disable the nitrous controller. So if you're on a rev limiter or you're spinning your tires and you want to go into your, uh, your traction control settings and you want to disable the nitrous for that, you can do all that stuff as well. Uh, disable coils are in there. Um, disable cruise control, flex fuel, uh, boost limiter. Um, some guys like to use the IBU switch to go to race gas on stage five, and then you'd, you'd set that when, that when it's above there to disable the flex boost control, the limiter by flex boost. Um, anyway, so we've got a long list of ones that you can do um, based on pressures, things like that, your, your sensor inputs. Um, you can't necessarily disable the sensor just because you're not using it. If you're using its functionality, you have to let that sensor fault. For example, nitrous. Uh, this is a common one. We get a lot of tech calls where guys say, hey, my nitrous isn't turning on. Well, what's your nitrous pressure say? Oh, I'm not using one. And then you look in the fault manager and they've got it disabled. Well, disabled is zero, so it's never going to fault and allow it to use your base nitrous pressure settings. So in that situation, you have to let that sensor fail. So you enable the sensor, you let it fail, and then you go to def your default pressure and you type in the value that you're normally running your nitrous at. So if you're using its functionality, those have to be enabled. If you're not using those functionality, so if you've got a manual throttle body, you don't need any of these enabled and triggering faults because it's not going to matter. We can't do anything with it. Okay. So you can go down the list and you can see all the different things that we've got in here. It's pretty much every sensor and then a bunch of the stuff that's triggered in together. So, uh, like differential wheel speed, if you are uh, if you trigger a fault based on differential wheel speed, we've got this enabled. It's set to very fast, one out of two. Um, soft limit when it's active. So we're not triggering any lights or anything, but we're going to trigger the soft limiter, which is calibrated in the limiter section, while that's active. So it's already gone through its retard and throttle reduction and it's still spinning so violently we got to start dropping cylinders at that point to reduce even more power. So that's typically how I set all these up. Let the, the traction control do most of the work and then come in here and let the soft limiter you know kind of handle the stuff when it gets gets too out of hand. So on our enabled functions we've got disabled which turns the whole functionality off. We talked about you know things that can trip you up there. We've got sticky, which will leave that on until it's cleared, and then persistent, which it carries across key cycles. Um, now your help files are going to break these down into a little bit more description, but basically you're going to have those functionalities where you want to ca carry it across key cycles. 
So if you are building a car for somebody, you want them to break the engine in nicely, not run boost, things like that. You can have that trigger light and carry across key cycles so they can't clear the codes. Uh, you'll know that they've done that. Um, again, that's all calibratable setup, whether you want to do that or not. So um, that's what these do here. We talked about those. Um, again, four actions here. And then you have active, suspected, occurred. We kind of talked about those conditions. If it's suspected, that means it's it's gotten into a into a fault condition, but hasn't come into the occurred state by meeting these requirements here for the number of samples. And then you have the occurred when they've hit those values, but it's not currently active. So then you have a combination of the two or three, depending on how you want to set it up for that particular uh, action. So if you want to say, you know, if you're in a bad overboost situation where you know a line fell off the wastegate you don't want the guy to keep boosting and keep boosting the car you can have that say why while occurred um you know turn on your limiter or turn on the check engine light so he knows there's a problem um there's other ones that you may just want to flash the light when it happens like you know fuel pressure variance if it cuts boost while your fuel pressure variance is up you want it to just flash the light say hey okay that was an intentional cut let's go back and look at what happened so that's kind of how the fault manager works. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful tool. You want to make sure and set up as many of these as you can to do the things that you want to protect the engine. You kind of want to set most of these up after everything's dialed in. You're going to spend a lot of time getting things right and cutting and, and all that stuff just because the fault manager is going to get in your way. So do the things that will help save you on the dyno, lean cuts, overboost cuts, but leave a lot of these other things up, you know, to set up once everything's kind of really dialed in and then you can, you know, set up your sensors to trigger a light when they're unplugged and things like that. But uh, again, you want to make sure that you have the functionalities that you're using enabled, <clears throat> fuel pressure, things like that. So if the fuel pressure sensor gets unplugged, it knows how to default properly in a safe way and allow the engine to continue to run in a safe manner. So that's uh, mainly the fault manager and the gender protection tab. We'll jump over to the power limiting. This is strictly based on electronic throttle stuff. Uh, you can target your throttle by horsepower or torque up here, and then you can create faults to bring you into one of the different uh, four power limit stages. And you know whether you want it to be valet mode limiting, you know power limit or things like that, you can set all that stuff up in here. The valet mode, um, we talked about that in another video. I would watch that video for a better description, but basically what you're gonna come in here is uh, you're gonna set on your reference time, so for 10 seconds, the valet TPS trigger goes above 80% um, for five seconds or two for another five seconds. So depending on what you've got in the descriptions are in here for the brake being pressed or the clutch being depressed uh, to trigger each valet mode. And then you've got an RPM limit and you've got a speed limit as well. This is your alternate throttle map for valet. Um, typically what I'll do with this is I'll drop these values way down up here because if I'm got it in valet mode, I don't want to be revving my engine to 6,000 RPM. So you can drop these down, make the car feel like it drives normal. So if you're taking it in for a, an alignment or anything like that where you know they're gonna drive the car, then you know you want to lower these <laughs> This is from experience. If you've watched the other video, it gives you the practical uses of this, but this is how you set this up. So let it kind of, you know, the guy can drive out in a traffic, he can not get run into, and the car's going to drive like a pretty weak car, but, it, you know, he'll be able to get what he needs done without beating on your vehicle for you. So you can, this is kind of a normal kind of curve. Just close the throttle at high RPM. Don't let him get up there. You could just, if, it depends on how you want to, aggressive you want to get, you can slam it shut. So, but that's all calibratable. You can figure that out how you want. Um, if you've got somebody else who drives the car and you want them to have you know somewhat spirited driving, maybe you want to just allow this thing to go something a little more like this. But it's you know again this is calibrated. We can set up however you want to. Um, we have let's see what else we got here. This will tell you obviously which one's active at the time. Um, these here again explain what they do so valet mode one is triggered when the throttle input is higher than the valet tps high value for longer than the valet one trigger time and inside of the valet key on reference time engine rpm must be at zero not running and the two step is not active and trans brake not engaged to trigger valet mode one valet mode one is only available to, you can only trigger these valet modes 
when you first turn the key on. You cannot start the engine. So turn the key on, you got 10 seconds, you can put them in these valet modes. So if you have this TPS above five seconds within that 10 second time frame, it's gonna trigger one. So actually in this case, if your clutch is pushed in and you're on the brake and you put your, if, uh, I'm sorry, the clutch is pushed in and your throttle's above 5% or above 80% for that amount of time, that will trigger the valet mode. So um, we're gonna go in, I'm not gonna talk about tire shake control, that's a completely different deal. It's mainly only available on the ProMod software. Um, but we talked about that and then knock control will be its own video. So this is a kind of general fault protection and um, the general protection setups right over here and how to use, use and set up the fault manager. So there's a lot going on here. Um, use it with caution, um, but definitely use it, set it up. To, uh, it will save your engine. Uh, I, I get emails all the time on things that have happened, the fuel pump dies or something like that, they're able to drive the car home perfectly fine, just can't get into boost. So the fault manager is a very, very important part of this. And without exception, we have the most interactive and in-depth fault manager of any aftermarket system out there, period, bar none. Nothing else is even close.